Since my last Animate Diff tutorial within Automatic 11.11, ControlNet underwent an update that actually broke everything that I showcased in my previous tutorial. Now I spent days looking for a fix for this. Myself, as well as many of you, kept getting the attribute error with the IP adapter. Huge shout out to the Reddit user known as Indrema for creating a fix for this by creating a separate control net and animate diff that work cohesively to prevent these errors from happening. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over the installation of these extensions, installing the models for these extensions, and I'm gonna show you three ways to generate animations, common errors you might face, the perfect settings to use, and just an overall workflow to get you ready to conquer generative AI art. Now, without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's get the updates to ControlNet and Animate Diff. So the first link in the description will bring you to the ControlNet for Animate Diff. Now if you've never installed an extension for Automatic 11.11 before, it's super easy. So click on the green code button here, copy the URL. Then in Automatic 11.11, click on Extensions, Install from URL, and then post the link in this little section here then click install. The second thing we need is the updated animate diff extension to work with our control net. So that will be the second link in the description. Should bring you to this. And again, same thing. Just go to the code button, copy, paste in the URL. Now after you have installed these, make sure you disable the original control net and the original animate diff. If you have them active and enabled while you have these new ones enabled, it's going to cause some issues. So make sure you just uncheck the boxes and make sure the ones that we installed are active. Then check for updates, apply and restart UI. You might even benefit from closing and reopening the command prompt that runs the automatic 11.11 user interface. Next, we need our motion model. So the third link in the description will bring you to this hugging face page here. Here you'll be able to find the motion models. Let's download this version 2 checkpoint. It's the latest and greatest. It's a pretty hefty file size. Let's click this download button here. So now that you have that downloaded, let's add that folder to the motion models folder within Animate Diff. Navigate to your Stable Diffusion web UI folder, then go to extensions, then animate diff for control net. And then just find the model folder and then just paste it in there. Lastly, make sure that your control net has all the models that we need, which is the tile model with the tile resample preprocessor. Now they should auto populate down here once you select the tile blur option. If they don't, if you do not have this model, the fourth link in the description will bring you to this hugging face page. And you can download that file right here. And when you download that file, go to the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder yet again, go to extensions, control net for animate diff, models, and then throw the path file in here. You can see mine right there. So within Automatic 11.11, if you open the Animate Diff extension and you see the motion model here, and you scroll down to the control net model, activate tile blur, and you see the tile resample preprocessor and the tile model, we are ready to start animating. The first method I'm going to show you is text to video. So for this, we're going to need a prompt to generate the video. Now, I don't want to take five to 10 minutes to come up with a complex, high quality prompt, so I'm going to be using the Tyrant Prompt Generator. So I want for this, let's just do a woman wearing a red dress. And then just click this to copy it. Now, I'm just going to paste that here. So now that we have our prompt, I'm just going to enable Animate Diff. Let's do 20 frame animation, 10 frames a second. It's gonna be a two second animation. Now since we're just doing text to video, we don't need our control net just yet. So let's go ahead and generate. So I'm glad this happened. This is a common problem with Animate Diff. If you are experiencing this, it is because our prompt is too long. You wanna keep your prompt below 50 tokens and we are just above that threshold. So let's go back to the prompt generator and then still do woman wearing a red dress. But let's do 20 words. Now we're at 32 tokens, this should be much better. If you are still having issues with the GIF changing to something completely different halfway through, there's a setting that'll fix that. So go to settings, go to optimizations, and then make sure the pad prompt slash negative prompt to be the same length. Option is checked. And this should fix the issue. 
Now the second way of animating with Animate Diff that I want to show you is image to video. So for this I'm going to use the same prompt but I'm going to generate an image. So obviously I'm going to disable Animate Diff and generate. So as you're most likely aware you can use this method with any image. And this is where we introduce control net. So enable control net, pixel perfect, drag your image into the control net here, then enable animate diff. So since I want the animation to still be of a woman wearing a red dress, we are going to keep the prompt exactly the same. So the end goal is to just animate this. She's not gonna morph into anything and it's not gonna transition into anything different. And then just make sure that you have tile blur, preprocessor and model all set to these parameters. Then hit generate and boom. We have our animation based off of our image. Now there's a lot of flickering and some inconsistencies in this. This is kind of typical. I will show you the way I upscale this and add a lot more quality to it in this video. Now the last technique I'm going to show you is image to image video or image to image to video essentially. So for this we're going to be using two different images. So for this technique we are essentially going to transition from this image to this image here, which really the only difference is the color of the dress that she's wearing. We are going to animate the difference between the two images. So to do this, we're going to introduce pissing me off more, motherfucker. Sorry about that. <laughs> Fucking fruit flies, brother. So for this, we're going to be introducing a second control net. Just going to enable it, pixel perfect, tile blur, the exact same settings we use on the first control net. Just make sure that in control net zero you have the image that you want to start from, and then the second control net you have the image you want to end at. Then we're going to enable animate diff, and the only thing I changed to generate this image was I changed crimson to white. So I'm going to keep that for this animation because I want the animation to end at a woman wearing a white dress and it's going to start at a woman wearing a crimson dress. So with all those parameters set, let's generate. And I just ran into this error here. I I don't really know why this error exists. I don't really know how to fix it aside from just restarting the web UI completely. So I'm going to do that. Yep, and just like that, completely restarting the user interface fixes the issue. And now we have our animation that transitions from a red dress to a white dress. Now there, there are a lot of issues with this animation. I mean, like with any kind of generative art process, it takes a lot of trial and error to get the result that you're looking for. So this is first try. So we could also fine tune our prompt a little bit as well. I'm gonna be a little more descriptive in my end prompt. Instead of her just transitioning into a white dress, I'm going to completely change the background just so there's more going on. So let's do a woman in a white dress on the beach. Now that's a great prompt. I forgot to add a limit. So let's redo that. Now that's actually really good. Again, I'm just gonna copy that. And if you wanna get your hands on this prompt generator, check the link in the description and use code YouTube25 for 25% off. There's also a seven day free trial included in that too. So you can try it out for seven days before you actually wanna pay for it. So going back into stable diffusion, let's paste the new prompt. And really that's the only thing then just disable the control nets. Actually, I want to keep the woman as closely resembled to this image as possible, so I'm going to use this control net, but change it to reference, and then disable animate diff. And that's close enough. This should be a good example. So then we're just going to load these images in the control net. Just re-enable that, and change this to tile blur. Then enable animate diff, regenerate. Well, I got that weird error again, but restarted it, reloaded everything and got this animation. So this actually looks really good. There's not really anything that's wildly inconsistent, but this will work. This this looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna show you how to overall improve the quality of these. So I'm gonna save this. So this is one of my favorite AI tools, bar none. You may have heard about it, you may even use it, but it's called Topaz Video AI. So I'm just gonna load the GIF image into here and you can see, again, it just looks really, looks really choppy. So there are a number of things I could have done within Automatic 1111 to get a little bit better animation, such as using a detailer. A negative prompt would have been very good as well, but overall this doesn't look too bad. So I want to upscale this and make it much smoother, which 
we can do very easily in Topaz. And I'm going to show you the perfect settings for that. So immediately, you can see that the input video is showing 512 by 512 at 10 frames per second, which is exactly what this is. That's what we generated it as. I want it to be upscaled by 2, so we can either do a 2 by upscale or do a custom resolution here. So 2 by upscale is going to show you the dimensions 1024 by 1024. Then I want a 60 FPS frame rate, make it buttery smooth. Then frame interpolation, I use the Apollo AI model, the Proteus AI model for AI enhancement. Then for stabilization, reduce jittery motions will reduce the flashiness in the video. Sometimes it can remove some stuff in the animation that we don't want removed, so use this one with caution, but when used correctly, it makes a huge difference on the quality. Motion de-blur, we're not going to use. Enhancement, we're going to use the progressive style, then leave everything else the same, and then I like an MP4 format. So with those set, I'm going to export it. So right away in this side-by-side, -side, you can see the stabilization is kind of making everything a little too blurry, so I'm going to disable that and regenerate. And now that looks much better compared to this. It's a lot more smooth, a lot less flickery. So you can definitely see the potential in this when you have a video that's actually high quality. Because your eyes are all fucked up. And I love this product so much, I actually reached out to Topaz Labs personally to get a referral link because everyone who uses generative AI to generate animations will benefit heavily from using this software. And I want to talk about it and I want to help them out. So if you're interested in using this software, I do have a referral link in the description. And if you use it, it'll greatly help out my channel. Not required, however, if you're serious about generative art and animations, you will greatly benefit from Topaz video. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you were able to get a good understanding of Animate Diff, using it with ControlNet and combining it to create animations that absolutely blow your mind. Now I have a ton of ideas and techniques that I want to showcase. Not to mention the fact that new innovations and techniques are popping up every single day in this space. So if you don't want to miss out on all that, make sure you subscribe and like the video. If you need help, have any questions, or just want to talk to me personally, make sure you join the Tyrant Empire. Link is in the description. You can get access to the private Tyrant Empire community. Be surrounded by like-minded individuals who are into generative AI art, as well as like-minded individuals who are on a mission to conquer their lives in every aspect. So with that said, that is all for now. Until next time, guys, keep conquering.